Let's now examine the problems related to the type of lighting used for the lunar pictures. There are in fact different elements suggesting that an artificial source rather than the sun was used to illuminate the set. This would obviously mean that the pictures were taken on Earth and not on the moon. The first element suggesting the use of artificial light are the so-called hot spots. The sun is a huge, extremely powerful source of light, capable of illuminating entire planets with its rays. For this reason, when the sun illuminates a large, flat expanse, the light reaches every visible point with the same intensity. Whether we observe an area closer to us or one in the distance, the luminosity of the ground is practically the same everywhere. This is due to the fact that the sun is thousands of times larger than the earth, which means it can easily illuminate any portion of its surface with the same intensity. If we use an artificial light source instead, like for example a movie light, the area of illuminated terrain will be much smaller. Furthermore, at the center of the illuminated area, we will see what is called a hot spot, while as we move away from the center, we will notice a substantial decrease of luminosity called fall off. If we now examine some pictures from the Apollo missions, we will notice the same phenomenon that we saw in the pictures taken with an artificial source. A noticeable hot spot in the center of the image and a just as noticeable drop of light as we move away from the center of the illuminated area. There is no reason why this area should appear darker than this one. This area darker than this one, or this area darker than this one. As we have seen before, when the sun illuminates a large expanse of land, its light reaches every visible point with the same intensity. If we use an artificial light instead, the illuminated area becomes brighter in the center and ever more dark as we move towards the edges. A blatant case of hot spot is found in one of the most famous pictures from NASA. This shot of Buzz Aldrin taken by Neil Armstrong during the Apollo 11 mission. Here the difference on the terrain is already visible to the naked eye, but it becomes absolutely evident for everybody after we increase the contrast. An opinion on this picture was asked of Jan Lundberg, the Hasselblad technician responsible for providing NASA with the cameras for the Apollo missions. When shown the Aldrin picture, Lundberg had to acknowledge, with some embarrassment, that the image seems to have been shot under a movie light and was unable to provide a valid explanation for that. Yes, it, it seems like he's standing in the spotlight. <laughs> and I can't explain that. Um, that, that escapes me. <laughs> Why? So, um, maybe you have to find Armstrong and ask him. The professional photographers were also very surprised by this noticeable and inexplicable fall off of light in the distance. La scurezza della parte scura di qua, della parte in ombra qua, è superiore alla, alla parte in ombra qua. E non dovrebbe essere. E non dovrebbe essere, dovrebbe essere uguale. Qui effettivamente ci si domanda cos'è che crea questa fascia di ombra, perché in teoria è un deserto e quindi... Sì, anche qui, no? Perché è più scuro qui? Cioè, sembra come che... 
cioè, non c'è motivo che queste colline sia perché il sole è eh. milioni di chilometri cioè, sì potrebbe essere lo scuro dovuto diciamo al fatto che il sole è radente. sta tramontando è radente ma sì. radente fa delle ombre semmai più lunghe ma non questo tipo di ombra se fossimo in una sala di posa o se avessimo puntato un grande faro in questa scena per quanto grande sia il faro non può mai avere una luminanza come quella naturale del, del sole e quindi per forza si creano delle cadute di luce in studio hanno molto senso in effetti diciamo in studio questo è giustificabilissimo però qui non ha molto senso dovrebbe essere il piatta piattamente, uniformemente illuminato dal sole. Sì, e le cadute qua sono pazzesche. Yeah, that is funny. You know, that, that is like totally lit. It's absolutely true. And I know these pictures, I've never thought about it. Meno è più scuro il terreno di lontananza. Sì, sì, sì. E non si capisce per forse. Non si capisce per forse. Il sole dovrebbe illuminare il terreno. Tutto da tutte le parti, è all'infinito la luce praticamente, no? E sono illuminate queste cose qui, il terreno dovrebbe essere eh, Come qui. Eh. Il solito discorso. Dalla sensazione di uno spot. Qui, sì. <ride> Proprio un, un sirio. Un grande Sirio. A Sirio, for those who are not professionals, is a large and powerful movie light. And curiously enough, a similar image was obtained in this documentary on the moon landings by using just that, a large movie light. As one can see, the results are very, very similar to those present in the Aldrin picture. According to Paolo Attivisimo, however, there is a different explanation for the fall off of light in the distance. It would have been the engine of the LEM, he claims, to blow the dust away during the landing, thus revealing the lighter sand underneath. Non è l'orizzonte del terreno lontano a essere più scuro, è quello il suo colore naturale. È la parte in primo piano che è stata pulita dal getto e quindi ha portato in, in superficie o ha esposto dei materiali più chiari. But this hypothesis by Attivismo doesn't hold water for at least two reasons. The first one is that the hotspot phenomenon takes place in different missions and in different situations, some of which are definitely far away from the landing area of the LAM. It is ludicrous to think that the lunar module would have gone around to neatly blow the dust off all these areas before it landed. Secondly, NASA itself denies the fact that the sand under the surface of the moon is lighter than the one on the surface. It is in fact the exact opposite. In this report on the Surveyor missions published in 1969, NASA wrote, Observations of the fine-grained parts of the lunar surface disturbed by the landing and liftoff of the Surveyor 6 spacecraft have shown that the lunar material exposed at depths no greater than a few millimeters has a significantly lower normal luminance factor than the undisturbed surface. In other words, the ground swept by the lunar module's jet should appear darker than the rest, if anything, and certainly not lighter, like Activismo says. Another theory put forth by the debunkers to explain the inconsistent illumination of the terrain is the so-called vignetting effect, a phenomenon that sometimes occurs in pictures when the corners of the frame appear darker than the rest of the image. But vignetting is a defect that only occurs in the low-cost lenses, and certainly not in the Zeiss lenses used by Hasselblad, which are simply the best in the world. Alcuni hanno suggerito che sia un problema di vignettatura, secondo te può esserlo? No, se è una lasse per la vignettatura, lo scherziamo, non la fa. Quindi, fosse una macchinetta da dolire, sì. Ma... Furthermore, several pictures show how the difference between hotspot and falloff is present in the center of the picture, as in the case of this image reflected in the astronaut's visor. And since vignetting never takes place in the center of the image, we can state with certainty that we are facing a real phenomenon on the ground, and not a case of vignetting. Stranamente, stranamente, il sole viene da questa parte. E, e, e qua è più, è, è più luminoso, come se, se arrivasse a illuminare questa zona e meno questa. 
This is supposed to come from the sun. Yes, the that sun in the, the sun behind. This is the photographer. It's ridiculous thing because there's absolutely no reason that it's darker here. And it's, like, it's when you have a spot where it's not strong enough. <laughs> right. <laughs> come on here. Ready? Yeah. Here's another similar example in which the illumination problem is quite obvious. If we look at the sides of the astronaut photographer, we notice that on the left, the ground is brightly lit, while on the right, there is a dramatic decrease in luminosity. If this scene were truly illuminated by the sun, this area of the ground would appear as brightly lit as this one. Finally, as a possible explanation, a phenomenon called Heiligenschein has been suggested. It refers to that peculiar halo of light that sometimes appears around the shadow of the photographer in some particular situations. But the Heiligenschein effect only occurs when the sun is located exactly behind the photographer's head, along with the axis of the lens. This is the reason why the halo effect, which is due to a retro-reflection phenomenon on the ground, appears all around its shadow. As we have seen instead, many of the hot spots in the NASA pictures occur when the light source is placed on the side of the photographer and not behind his head. Question. Given that the sun should illuminate the whole landscape with the same intensity, both close and far away, can you explain the reason for the noticeable fall off of light seen in many of the Apollo pictures? In this particular case, the fall-off takes place in the center of the frame, thus excluding a vignetting problem, and with the source placed on the side, thus excluding the Heiligenschein effect. Can you explain the reason for the noticeable fall-off of light that can be seen on the terrain right behind the astronaut photographer? Another problem found in certain